Hello and welcome to another Beaver Builder website stripped down and this one is a bit different. I don't have a guest for you. It's just going to be me showing you around the site that is on your screen at the moment and that is the new design groups website and they are UK designers of furniture. So this site is really about showing off their furniture product range to their type of customers who are largely other types of businesses. They are a business to business service primarily. Thought this would be a good site to show you because it is our first venture last year in using Beaver Thema. And by our standards, it's a more complex build than what we normally do. We tend to do more brochure sites and low budget sites. And this actually is reasonably low budget, but with Beaver Thema, we're able to achieve a lot more than we normally would do within budget anyway. Okay, so let me just give you a quick overview of what we were doing on this one. So this one has a couple of custom post types that we needed to create which is the first one is products themselves and another one called case studies, which showed off where their products are used in situ and these various projects. And within those custom post types, we created some custom fields. So we could have in the back end, the client add in the content and that show on the front end and let me just go to a product page so I can show and with Beaver Thema and field connectors we were then able to have those custom fields connect up with Beaver Builder modules which is what we've done here with the Beaver Builder slider, Beaver Builder gallery, also Beaver Builder button over here. If I click on this We'll see here that we've got a pop-up which is being provided by Doug Bell Chamber via uh, WPD Beaver pop-ups and that's a free plugin which is absolutely fantastic and I'm going to be using a lot more and we've got a gravity form in here and as you can see Beaver Thema comes into this as well because we have a field connector here connecting this to the post title or product title in this case and it's also been used here as well to make individual these buttons as well so it's got the title of the product here and that changes you know whatever pro product you're looking at you've got their name there um what else we let's go back to the product archive page we also created some custom taxonomies so aside from the wordpress and tags and categories which are taxonomies we created some other ones and applied those to the products as well so we've got one for brands here and we've got one for the types my internet connection is going slow by the way so types of furniture we've got the applications for that furniture which is useful for their type of customer who i believe may be other designers who are putting together products um, their products for their own projects and we've got this which is now being called a to Z we changed this but it was to show off that it's sort of product ranges because some of the names here for their products have other items within them so there are ranges okay so there's that one more thing I'll just quickly show you in my overview and this is something that's maybe quite common to these types of sites at least I've had to do it before and it was quite difficult on a more expensive job um, they needed to have a media download page so uh, their typical visitor is coming looking for things like their CAD files, which are huge files, and also for high resolution images. And we don't want those on our own server slowing down the site. So we wanted something like this where you could select the items you were looking for. And with a click here, it would take you off to, in this case, Dropbox to be able to get those products. So it's just images on this one. Some of them have got CAD files on them. Okay, and we could do this. Again, this is where Thema comes in. This is just the post module layout as grids. But with Thema on it, you're able to go in and customize the output 
of this post module as well. And with it, we were able to take a custom field where the client then can put in their Dropbox URL and then we can have that link out to it via this. I hope that makes sense. Okay, I'm going to go back to the home page now and try and explain a bit about this. But first, I just want to apologize in advance for any noises you're likely to hear outside. I've been trying to do this video for some time. Well, one thing is that I've had a terrible cold, so if I'm not very coherent, it's probably still that hanging over. But the noise is likely to appear. We are in Goa in India. It's lovely. It's by the beach. We're in a nice village and uh, there's a nice beach road that takes us down there. But it is the peak season and the tourists have taken up higher end really thunderous motorbikes to go down to the beach. So we get a lot of that noise and a lot of beeping. Parties may erupt, all sorts of things can happen. It's been tricky to find a single time in the day where it's silent enough. So I've left the camera on. I'm going to try and get through this um, without editing it. Uh, so uh, wish me luck. Okay, I'm just going to clear my throat now. <clears throat> right. To talk a bit about uh, the client. Well, first things... First, I should say, normally on a strip down, I would invite a guest to tell us a bit about themselves and their business. And I want to bypass that because I'm a regular on a podcast called WP Builds Podcast at WPBuilds.com, which is largely run by my friend Nathan Wrigley, but I'm a regular weekly on it. And I talk a lot there about that kind of stuff. So probably what I want to do instead is just to call out to the person whose client this really is, my good friend Maria Vincent of well, 30 plus years. We went to school together in Lincolnshire, which coincidentally is also where Nathan grew up. But she's been making websites for local Lincolnshire people primarily um, since about 2000, usually do sort of HTML sites. She came from a marketing background, in fact, marketing Lincolnshire and still does some of that. But she needed help with WordPress and, and since then we've been doing work together and she's been providing the clients, largely dealing with the clients and the design side of stuff, allowing me to just kind of do the, the WordPressy type stuff. Uh, behind the scenes and, and travel a bit around the world. So big thanks to her. This is her client. And um, uh, the reason she's not here talking about it is that this, this particular project involved a lot more of me and more of me actually dealing with the client in this case. But um, the story is with this one, this is not the first job we're doing. The main goal with this project was to bring together three sites which we had also created alongside another one with schools, but that still stands independent. But Ryan Furniture, Chorus Furniture and Cambridge Park are the three brands or organisations who created furniture brought together under this one new design group. And we created the websites for these and now they need to come together without confusing uh, existing customers, but still retaining some of their brand identity as well, which is sort of highlighted by these colors. And you'll see this through the theme as well. And maybe before I go on, I should say a little bit about our approach to this. I've shown you that we've created all these custom fields and all of that. Well, we, the sites that we originally did, particularly with Ryan Furniture and Cambridge Park, were pretty similar to this without all the complex filtering. But um, we did it in a different way. We had Beaver Builder, and it's still fairly new to us when we uh, did Ryan Furniture. But with that, we had the post module, so we could create uh, those grid-like um, display of products. And we could also uh, activate Beaver Builder on posts as well. So we could use those posts instead of having a custom post type and we could use WordPress categories to have different types of products. And that's how we did it. All we needed to do was to create one template and we could still have the products being uh, very similar with um, the galleries in there and the client could edit them from the front end. We had one template and could 
keep duplicating the post over and over again. There's plenty of free plugins that allow you to do that and then just take, change the details on each one. The only downside of doing that, well, there's two. Uh, the main one is that should you be doing the project and there's a big major change like some content needs adding in that wasn't there before well you are kind of stuffed up as you have to go into each of those projects or posts each of those and change them manually um, whereas doing it this way with Thema, we can put the content in the back end and then change all of the products in one change of the template all in one go. The other downside is that we, with um, say the categories and tags, if you were to cl click through to those, it's going to use the themes layout for them. So the PHP file that lays out those is largely going to show those uh, as you would expect for blog posts and that. So it's gonna do them in a list format where they're gonna display them like that. Now you could do some things with uh, CSS on that, but it starts to get more complex and we left it as it was, it was fine for that. But here it makes it so much easier because we can style those archive pages. So for search and for any categories in any way that we want with Beaver Thema and have them individual or just the same and consistent across the whole of the sites. So we did it this way because there's more furniture bringing these together and there could be changes. And as we went on, um, there was more likely, there's more people involved in this website. But a key thing to know about this website is that we were and always have been dealing with the employees in the organization who are really charged with looking after kind of the visual stuff, making um, their brochures, getting their exhibitions ready, that kind of stuff, and have those design skills. So, uh, so they've wanted to lead in the design of each of these sites, and that's what we've done. And we haven't had really any dealing with the directors who were paying for the site. And I, I think that's the only way it could work in the sense of the value because they're not going to pay a lot of money for um, their websites in the way that they uh, see the value. I think things are probably changing there, but for them, this was something that serves their existing clients just as a brochure would. Um, so it wasn't you know, on us to try and make sure they got good rankings and particularly take care of uh, SEO. Um, we also, didn't need to do too much in the way of mobile responsivity because um, most of their customers are working from their offices nine to five Monday to Friday and uh, there's very few on the sticks of people coming in on mobile devices under 10% anyway. So it's there and I think I've done an okay job with the mobile responsive stuff but it's not been a priority neither as the SEO if you're looking at it from that point of view. It may change a little bit when I got this site now. The new person who did the design for us here, uh, Gary, who was a joy to work with, he wasn't the first person we started working with on this, but he kind of knew his stuff, did the design really for this. Um, uh, it's more, much more of a background on seeing the value of creating blog posts and stuff. And we probably be coming back or I will be to set up the blog post for this and see it as a separate category if they've got a content uh, strategy sorted out uh, to make that pay off. So it might be not a finished job, but again, this site, even I think even adding that on, it's probably we're talking about a sort of £2,000 job uh, at the most, even adding on extra work and it's it's under that on at the moment. So that's where we're at. Okay, let's see, what do I need to tell you about first? There's a lot to cover here. Um, one of the things I mentioned about the keeping this uh, branding going through each of the posts, before I go on to sort of what tools I've used, I think I'll just quickly cover that. If I go over to this product page over here, you'll see that there's a hint to the branding. So. They've lined up these with their, their different brands, so Cambridge Park, Chorus, and Ryan. And you'll see here we've got Cambridge Park on this page, and we've got red here on the anchor tag, and also on the underlining here. If we look over at Theo, which is 
created by Chorus, we'll see that it's linked up with this. So this was another little task, uh, something work out how to get around with this. As we're creating, really what we wanted to do was to create one template and have it the same. So I needed a way to be able to sort of tag up all of these. And that was fairly easy because we created, if you remember, over here, a, a taxonomy for brands, and that's got their brands. So once that taxonomy had been created, all I needed to do, and I can just show you that here, is to put into functions PHP something I found on the internet. Now, actually, on YouTube, I mean, I shall keep links to everything here. I'm able to share stuff. I don't think I'll be able to share this until I get our website going for this. And, okay, we seem to be going a bit slow on the net, but we're here. So there was, let me just find that. Uh, yeah, so we can add a, a taxonomy term to a body class. So it gave me a CSS selector so I could add in that styling. So what's happened here, we've got a sort of function here that if it's a singular page here, and we've got a brand in here that will add the actual tag that we've put onto the end of it and and return that as a body class as a selector that I can use then to style individually depending on the product page that you're on, um, which I've done over on styles over here. Uh, painfully slow here. I'm wondering whether to pause and come back for this. Ha! <laughs> ah, this is happening. Uh, okay, we're there. Okay, it's not only the noise, but my internet connection is poor, which is the other reason, by the way, why you don't have a guest. It's because I can't rely on the internet to stay stable all the time. It can be fast at, very, at times. So there we are. What happens is it will output that brand underscore and then whatever that is, and then I can add some CSS, as you can see. Let's go to this one. This is Cambridge Park product. It's putting that there and another technique I do quite a bit is to use CSS um, pseudo elements uh, to add a font awesome round dot there and color that and we can also style up the links and of course we've got the brand colors for chorus over here as well so that's how that issue was solved for me um, so then now we can automatically as soon as something is assigned the taxonomy of those brands it does that job as well as adding them to our filter selections over there as well um, okay before actually let me just go on uh, there's a couple of things I want to cover well one thing you'll see here that the toolbar is not showing so I'm just going to show you this little um, Chrome extension which I quite like which is uh, called uh, WP admin bar hider <clears throat> I don't know about you I find sometimes if I'm doing some design in the browser and I'm seeing this all the time it kind of mentally I think this is a color that's there you know a part of the design and I don't see the header as as it should be any longer so I find this quite handy to keep uh, putting that up uh, once in a while to see that okay let me just give you a quick overview of the site actually another thing so Thema is also on this site providing the header and footer site wide and there's a couple of tutorials there's uh, things that are not necessarily specific to this site but a couple of things that I've done uh, tutorials on I showed you how I got around them, um, which I'll link also here. So as it's a replacement header and I'm using the Beaver Builder theme, I also wanted to have the Beaver Builder theme search icon. So I did a video on how to put that into Thema headers. So you'll find that in the link below. Also on the footer here, you'll see we're in 2018, that automatically updated on the replacement header. So um, I show how you can add that short code on another. Uh, video there's one other page which I've got open over here which I did a video on so the designer page which shows off their designers is over here and I did a video that will be linked below on how to create that and you can go to where I've set this up and actually download the template and use it yourself and finally I did another video so I'll include the link on that on how to get this kind of hover over effect here with the titles as well 
Um, so that's included. So that's covered a few things that I don't want to talk about. So that saved a bit of time. Okay, right, let's go in, I think, to the back end of the site and we'll take a look at the plugins. That's maybe one way of covering everything here. And let's see if we can get this to move any faster this time. No, it seems like we're still in painfully slow mode. Okay. Oh, we're there. Okay, let's go through the list here. Right, well, the first one's interesting. Again, it's the first use of this plugin for me. I did test out, I got a copy of the pro version of this, but I felt I could use the free version well enough. And the best way to show what that's doing for us here, it's quite useful, I think, for product sites, um, particularly for the client, if they're doing their own updating or helping you while you're making the site, as we got some help. Let me just open this up. If we go to the product page here, my, okay, there we are. So this is not your typical view that you're gonna get with WordPress. Here, it's that plugin has allowed us by editing the columns here to add in the featured image, which is our product image here. And we could also include some of the taxonomies that we've um created as well for the brands here i mean i chose brands here and as well for the types here so if i click on that it will just show me all the chairs and i can go back and select all again all the 75 products here so this makes it a lot easier to um, see what you're you're dealing with particularly if some of the names are very similar you know which product you're talking about so I think that's quite a handy plugin and I'll be using that for similar sites in the future. I think the pro version allows you to uh, connect up with other plugins which we are using uh, like the advanced custom fields, that's what's creating our fields. And that's the next plugin I'm talking about which is advanced custom fields pro. I don't know if I needed the pro version for this site, I just happen to have the license and it can be applied to all sites for life. Um, so that's why I'm using that one. and. Um, that's what's creating our custom fields. Now, let me show you the custom fields in the back end. I was showing you this product here, and I've also opened up the back end of this so you can see where the fields are being used. So when we created this uh, custom post type for products, we allowed it to just retain some of the WordPress defaults, so the title and also the editor area here, which is being used to output all the content there. And we only needed then to add in the product slider here, the product gallery, and what's called dimensions here now should have been called specifications, which is the place to upload the PDFs on here so at the front end here and through beaver thema we could connect that up to be a link to it which opens up and has their pdf which is loaded in the back end finally um, and i've shown you this before there was the dropbox entry here and that's not used on the product page itself this is only being used on that media library okay where are we there and finally um, the brand image here which is showing on the page here ideally i would have done this a little bit kept differently i think i would somehow linked it up to the styles that was creating here but uh, different things were planned over time i think there was a thought about having these link up to some pages explaining more about the particular brands but it was kept simple in the end um, so that's really what uh, our custom fields have been doing and you can see this I'll just quickly show you that um, where the custom fields over here we have some more custom fields created for the um, the other side the case studies but here are the uh, product groups for here and we've got five fields here and if this decides to enter you'll see that this will just match exactly what you've seen in the back end 
but we are going slow again. Okay, looks like we're there. Okay, so there's the product slider, a type of, again, gallery, gallery used dimensions. That was a file that needed to be uploaded for this. It was text that we link. So we've got a link there and then image for this and they were output in there. Now you might be aware of pods. I'm sure people watching this will be and um, be big fans of pods. A plugin that allows you to create these fields but also do the job of creating those custom taxonomies and also uh, the custom so what else the custom yeah custom taxonomies and custom posts as well as the custom fields and will also link in with beaver builder as well well the reason i'm not using that is because we started with um acf advanced custom fields pro before uh, the wonderful bernhard grunu i hope i said your name right came out with um his plugin that made it much easier to connect um, beaver builder with pods um, and also um, there's another side to it I think I may have still used uh, ACF because it does have a very nice way of allowing the client um, to add their content it's very clean uh, back-end stuff I haven't to be honest I'm saying this but I haven't looked at pods let's just go oops where have we gone oh I've already gone off it haven't I haha <laughs> but it, it, it a nice interface in the back end um you know to be able to add images which i don't think pods kind of has at the moment i didn't need the extra thing that pods give which is more uh, two directional relationships or multi-directional relationships which i didn't need in this so i might have still used advanced custom fields anyway for this project okay i think i'm done with this so i'm going to close this off because i'm getting myself a bit confused let's go back to plugins so that's advanced custom fields i'm using backup buddy don't need to talk about that it's an extra backup because we are using updraft pro i am managing the maintenance of this site and the hosting and that's what we're using to automatically send to amazon s3 and this is a bit of a backup in case i need to migrate or want to save as I'm in the site because there's some changes going on. Uh, obviously, Beaver Builder and using the agency version. Obviously, Beaver Thema. This one called Cache is actually WP Rocket. You can change the name. They've got some white labeling as such that you can do. If you don't know you can do this, just go and search on WP Rocket and white labeling. And there's a little code snippet word that you need to just add to the WP config file and then that opens up the options to add the white label into their interface um, and I've been mentioning all of our custom post types custom taxonomies they're all these have been created with custom post type UI another free plugin which is great I mean you can find the code to create these things yourself but this is really convenient to add those. I'm not really going to look at the plugin here, but once it's installed, you can go and uh, just create and edit your own taxonomies. And we created those, um, I think, was it five taxonomies and those two custom post types with that, which have been used. Okay, uh, let's, uh, where are we on to there? So facet WP and the, uh, the extra add-on that connects it with beaver builder now i think i probably will say something a little review on the facet wp has been wonderful for this project and really really easy to use um, once you've got that add-on once you're in and i can show you this now actually let me just go and turn on the page actually i'm in theme layouts here if we uh -huh, gosh well, you can see how slow my internet connection is because uh, this is usually kind of instant for me. But I might have to skip over this. But uh, you can easily just drag in what you need with this because it adds in some extra modules yourself. I am just going to pop over to the plugins there. And um, it's really handy and it does something very complex and of course it does more with this plugin than I use it for so it's been a dream on one hand but it's a plugin that I'm not going to uh, become a 
customer of regularly because they've set it up in a way where their licensing doesn't tie in with the licensing I have. So they don't have any unlimited licensing packages for people like us who maintain sites and look after updates for our clients. We really, they want you to, I believe, to get your clients to go and buy directly from them. And it's $99 for three licenses, but those three licenses could be used up on one site if you want to have test sites uh, as well and the other one above that is 20 licenses for I think two uh, for nine the price has been going up a lot and that's all they have and uh, you know when seen from the point of view of our type of clients on a budget and also as an add-on if you like to Beaver Builder a theme uh, adding this filtering effect you know it's a lot more expensive and and then it then Beaver Thema itself is so I'm hoping and I think they probably will at some point, certainly at least on the horizon, even if they've not committed to it, they will add some kind of filtering as well to this. And maybe some other people are working on it as well. I know somebody uh, is looking into this as well. So I'm hoping something will come up so I won't be using Facet WP because it becomes quite tricky to put that on our type of clients. But I mean, of course, if you've got bigger budget clients and the amount of time it could save you in development time then you know it's probably a very good thing to do I will give it an honest review here I have not needed to do much with it uh, not for a long time but it has one thing I do look for in my plugins is that they are going to be easy to maintain excuse me I need to cough <clears throat> and uh, a few little warnings it could just be bad luck on my part but um, when let me just see if that's opened up. Yes, it has now. Um, and I can just show you, actually, we're just dragging in this facet. Uh, I can label these applications. Now, one issue that I had just recently, this is the title for these, and I've titled them up here, but I also needed some CSS add-in so they could show white without this text turning into white, the drop-down text. So I added some custom CSS to it, and I updated and it's not on their change log but they changed the selector name for those titles which meant then I had to go searching for what the problem was and also I did an update as well um, to uh, the Beaver Builder module side I think it's on that side of it it is a, the a kind of free add-on so maybe I'm being a bit critical but um, in this, we also have a load more adding. Oh, you can't do it when I'm in this view, but uh, load more will load more. The pro that that pagination actually broke when I did an update as well, so I had to revert back until they'd fixed that as well. So um, yeah, that's just it. It was actually a couple of maintenance jobs for me, which I'd rather do without. So I'm hoping something will get built into Beaver Thema. But otherwise, you know, this is the the as far as I can see, looking around at what else is out there. If you want something to do this with Beaver Builder right now. Now, this is the plugin to do it um, because it's just the easiest one. Okay, I hope that was a kind of fair review. Right, back to plugins. And uh, yeah, I use Gravity Forms. We're using them. I'm styling them uh, with Power Pack, um, which is really handy there. We've got the um, MailChimp add on for their newsletter, and that's added to those. Um, I use main WP for uh, managing and updating the plugins on people's sites when they're on our plan. And this is a uh, plugin called WP Child Reports. And this is actually a fork of an up, another plugin which I, I see get mentioned quite a lot. Of. Uh, by people because it is quite a handy one the plugins called stream maybe WP stream I'll try and put the link below here and what it does it just kind of keeps uh, a track on what's going on in your install here now we use it to generate or w, main WP um, use it to generate the client reports so you can say what plugins have been updated by us but it also keeps uh, a tab on whoever's using and what they're doing in it it's not comprehensive but it's really handy so you know if if you do have the type of client who might fiddle around a lot and then say it wasn't me gov or I didn't touch it um, you'll know whether they did touch it and probably what they did so it might be quite handy for that um, 
power pack for Beaver Builder. Not used much in this. I, I kind of a bit of a fancy of mine uh, that had this new at the time. Let me just um, sort of. So we're using their uh, navigation, which has got their advanced navigation, which has got this uh, effect on there, which I quite liked. It also got used as well on this uh, a bit. Uh, wrongly named last but not least because it doesn't help anybody but this is actually what the client did for themselves so I just set it up with if we can open it up with a an, the accordion okay here we go and the client was able to set this and put up their own icons and I think that's about the only place I'm using um, power pack on this site um short pixel image optimizer fantastic it optimizes all your images best not talk about that now i got a, a great deal as many of us did with app sumo where they were doing it with this lifetime deal on regular monthly amounts it's still worth checking out if you've not got the deal because you can buy bulk packs for imaging and i really love it i love the interface but i'm not gonna go into that um up to I mentioned video user manuals which is something troy dean's a company who create those uh, um up to, up to date uh, video manuals <laughs> for your clients to use which are kept in the install in here word fence just because <laughs> it's uh, one of the security measures over there. I've never been a big fan of using the big heavy security plugins. I'm not sure if they're really needed, um, but I chose WordFence because it gives me good reports and eventually I'll be able to actually output some of that information into client reports if I need to. And also, of course, Doug's uh, plugin that I've mentioned there. And again, going with another standard, almost an industry standard now, isn't it? Yoast SEO for the SEO there. Don't like the advertising it puts out in the back, but hey, it's free. <laughs> the guy's got to make a living, I guess. Um, okay, so that's it. Then maybe I should show you... Um, Hmm. Yeah, I will just go in and show you the Thema layouts because there is one thing that I've skirted over a little bit here. Um, all was going well with the theory that we build one layout for our products and then if we want to change them, <laughs> we can just do it all in one go. Well, actually, as we went along with the project, we realized there was a problem with the same layout for all projects. So <clears throat> we needed to set up a uh, um, template for the Square products, which I was showing you um, with this. Oops, let's go to the right one. I'll get rid of this. And this was Square. But on other ones, you'll see if you click around, you'll see that the product is actually a sort of wider, uh, the, actually this width and the gallery is below it and there's four of them, uh, these small gallery images underneath. We needed to do two styles just because of the nature of the images that we had, they wouldn't kind of work. So it's exactly the same template with one change made to it uh, in this area. And if I go back to Thema here, you'll see this. And it's been assigned to a product gallery. So product galleries haven't really been used by us. So we just created one and they need to select um, product square or product wide depending and we had to have a third one in for those products that didn't have anything more than one or two uh, images so they couldn't make up the display so we got one for that and they're assigned when you're in the back end of a post let me go into edit this post um, you will see Ha. Huh. Again, very slow. I'm so sorry about this, but uh, I'm going to carry on with it or we'll never get finished and let that load up a little while. And there we are. So I'm just using the standard categories that come with WordPress here. You'll see that we've also got Chorus uh, Cambridge Park in there. In fact, this is a legacy thing from when we first set this up. We don't need them because we created... Um, 
our own custom taxonomy called brands here, which is doing everything. So if they were untagged from each of these, it wouldn't matter. But this is where um, they can assign which of their products, if you like, needs which of the templates um, there. And that's all. Uh, and if you're just wondering about this primary and make primary, that's that only is there because of the Yoast plugin. Uh, it allows you to assign these sort of templates to primary or, or categories, if you like, to primary and uh, secondary. Okay, so, right, where have I got up to? I think I'm just going to take a small pause so I can check what else I need to quickly cover. So, be back. Give me a moment. Right, I'm back. I've had to change my dongle to get better internet, and I've changed a few of my tabs so I can speed things up for the end. So, things that I just wanted to show you was... Um, Beaver pop-ups in action. I thought that was quite interesting. So I'm now looking at Doug's um, plugin over here. Now, how you use it, it's really has got videos himself on there. But um, once you've, uh, you can assign those and create them. And once you do, you just um, open up the it with Page Builder, and you can style the background and set some of the other options. Um, that are on here. Let me just show you this. So, oh, actually, an image background which I had in before is showing on that, but I've set it. He um, has just recently added the ability to disable this on mobile and tablets, so which is quite handy because for certain types of products, um, Google is penalizing if you're using them on mobile devices. Um, and it's a really easy thing to do once you've styled this and you want to assign it to a button when you go to that beaver builder button and this plugins on you get the option to assign it to a pop-up so that was really easy what i just mentioned on this was one of the tricks that we did on this uh, with the field connectors as i mentioned before they had a field connector here so that was the post title and that was uh, outputting on the different pages that due to that um, I mentioned as well I was using um, a power pack to style the gravity forms here actually it's got a little um, button there there was another video I did on adding this to match the other styling through the site with gravity forms so I better add that link as well that was my last video I believe um, so that's how we were able to do that Doug's Pop-up actually solved another problem for us. I'm going to just come out of this and just go and look at this. I've got one called holding page here. So when we came around to um, finishing this site and wanted to put it live, we knew that all these other uh, three sites were active um, and gained some link juice on individual products on their pages. And we wanted those to get a permanent redirect to the most relevant page, you know, product to product, ideally. But we also recognize that people are going to be slightly confused if heading um, to uh, Google and searching for Chorus Furniture to end up on the wrong site and possibly in, not in a place they expected with things not looking the way expected. So there was thoughts about whether we'd have a splash page and, and do a temporary redirect or permanent redirect to that page but not so good for SEO. So Doug's um, plugin came in as the compromise to that. So what we did is do 301 redirects from all of the other sites to this site and to the, the most relevant place. Um, but what we did is that we had his pop-up appear um, instantly as soon as they did and you could click out of it and that just said what had happened. They were now joined together and... Um, and that was all it needed. I could just show you what was. It was a simple message. I'll just go and show you what that was. And it had a sort of transparent. We did make a slight mistake on it. We've got it all white. And then people didn't know to click the X to move out. But we made it a transparent background in the end. And then you could click either side and people could see there was a site underneath. But it just explained trying to visit this and just did this. And this was a pop-up which you can assign with his pop-up manager. It's quite... It's reasonably advanced this pop-up and really convenient for Beaver Builder if 
you know, um, really for most of the jobs here, but you can, you know, set it to site wide, which we did. So any of the pages that land up would have got that pop up. Um, and you could set, you know, once you go on here, when it comes on the entrance, you can set it to be a one time only, which is what we did. So unless somebody cleared their cookies, they would be told this the first time they visited it, and, but not pestered by it in the future. It's now been taken off now because pretty much everything redirects to this page. So anyone's got a warning anyway, if they're searching for Cambridge Park or uh, Ryan Furniture UK, they're going to end up uh, to this site. Okay, so that's um, something we did there. I was going to show you around. Um, oh, something I didn't mention really. Oh, I guess I did. Yeah, field connectors on on the case study pages as well. Uh, I was just going to show you, and I've opened this up already, um, how this was done with the media download page. So, again, this was just on a normal page, not on an archive page as such. But here I just needed to go to post layout custom. And uh, then you can go and edit the back end. So here with a little bit of HTML knowledge and an understanding that you can grab those field connectors here. So advanced custom fields type URL and that's our high res images. I've got that link to uh, Dropbox coming through here, connected to the featured post image, which is showing here. And that was all that needed to be done. And I kind of repeated the same here with the title in over here. So that's how we did that. Um, let me say that's done. I'm going to discard in case something accidentally got saved. Um, and we added as well, oops, <laughs> Still slow net. Uh, yeah, okay, so we're, we're there. And uh, I added this as well. So this is just another bit of code which you'll be able to find any way to add bookmarks because we wanted people to remember this page uh, as well and bookmark it for those people who are regular who need these kind of things. They can just keep that. And all we needed to do to make that happen, I'm going to have to try and go into the page builder again. Um, I just added this to the individual page. If I can get that up, I'm going to use the uh, Beaver Builder shortcut of, if it's loaded, Control and Y in my case, or Command and Y. Um, yeah, I added my styling actually as well um, to this particular page because there's some extra styling that's not elsewhere. But just added in um, some javascript here which effectively knows that if you're on a mac it will tell you to use command and d to a bookmark and control and d if you're on windows so i'm sure you'll be able to discover this but hopefully i shall get my site up and be able to share this with you right i think i i've probably taken up enough of your time showing you this site that I'm sure there is plenty more I could talk about, but I've realized that I've been going on about certain topics quite a bit. Um, some things were just some CSS fixes that I needed to do. As you can see on here, um, Gary gave us this design with this forward slashes. They are not things I've put in the menu themselves. I've had to add those again with my usual trick of adding a, a pseudo element uh, with this forward slash um, and only applying it when it's full width because uh, I wanted it to disappear as soon as the site I don't want it on these uh, when it's going to this mobile display as well uh, so there's a lot of little things in this one it was quite a fun project to work on and if you've got any questions about anything on it uh, I'll do my best to answer in the time that I've got so I think that's enough. I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you for spending the time with me. Sorry for the slow internet connection. I hope it hasn't wasted too much of your time. If you do like this, then please give me a thumbs up on YouTube because you know, it's just nice. And, and if you're not subscribed and you like these kind of videos, um, then please do subscribe. That's great. Makes me feel great. And uh, yeah, I'll see you again with a shorter how-to video next. Okay, bye-bye.